Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about properties of logarithms. So that's kind of things that look like uh, like this. So I would highly recommend for this video you pause and try the examples and there are always free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. I highly recommend the notes for this particular video because um, this is going to kind of help organize you for everything that we've got to do because there are some notes that I'd highly recommend that you, you would take for this video. And before we get started, maybe you could consider liking my video or subscribing to my channel. Those are the true VIPs in my opinion, or sharing it with a friend. I'm trying to grow this channel. I want free math help for everybody. I want it to be available. So every little bit helps. Okay, so let's get into it. Uh, so we've got to talk about some properties of logarithms here. So just a few ground rules. X, Y, and A, these are positive numbers. A is not equal to one. R will be a real number. So if we have all that just known in the back of our head, then we get some very nice properties. So the first three we're going to use quite a bit in this video. We have the product rule, which says if I have log base a of x, y, so if I'm multiplying two things together, I can break these things up using addition and you keep the base the same. Then we have the quotient rule. So I have log base a of a, uh, log base a of x over y. I can break this division up by subtraction as shown. And then finally, I have the power rule. So if I have an exponent here, Basically what this allows me to do is to bring it out in front. So I highly recommend that you write these properties down for this video. Um, I have some exercises that I think will be very beneficial for you to try. So you're going to want to have this list in front of you as you're kind of getting used to working with this. And I have a few other properties I want to show you. So these properties, I've actually talked about some of these in other videos. So the first two, um, these are little facts that come up from time to time. Um, and so if you write them in their exponential form, it makes sense why these actually work the way that they do. This one will also make probably more sense as to why this works the way that it does once we start playing around with um, certain logarithms, uh, but something just that you're going to have noted. And this actually, this last one has to do with just inverses. So this would be actually composing an exponential function with, its, uh, with a logarithmic function. And so this would just equal x. So if you know anything about inverses, which if you don't, don't worry about it. But this is just a, a property of uh, the composition of just a function with its inverse. So this actually makes sense why this works. Okay, so now that I have those properties written down, hopefully you've, you've paused the video and written them all down. Uh, like I said, I think you're going to find that very helpful for this particular video. Let's talk about how to actually use them. So this first set, I have just kind of some of the, the basic examples here. So notice here, so I've got log base 3 of 5y. So then just what property or what can I do to this? So this would be using then the product rule. And, and so I can break this up and rewrite this as log base three of five plus log base three of y. So that's kind of the idea. Now, the second one, I've got log base seven of three over x. So this one, I can use the quotient rule. So I can break this up using subtraction. So I could rewrite this as log base seven of three minus log base seven of x. And that's all I can do for that one. And then this last one, again, just kind of getting used to some of the basic properties. So I can just take this exponent and bring it out in front. So this log base two of x to the seventh is the same as seven times log base two of x. So that's some of the basic properties just to make sure we've got the, that idea here, there. Now I have just two more examples. So I'll, I'll tell you kind of my idea for this particular video. I'm going to show you just some of the basic ideas, but I have another video of more examples that I will drop a link to in the description if you, if you need to see more examples. So if this isn't enough for you, just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about this example. So I'm going to show you kind of the, the long way that you can approach this. And actually, maybe, maybe you want to pause this and, and try this on your own. It might be more meaningful to you. So yeah, why don't you pause, um, try this out with all the rules that we just discussed, hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to show you kind of the longer way that I see a lot of people do this when they're first learning this. And, and that so it makes sense why they do it. So first they, they break up the top and the bottom and then looking at this. So then you can break this up using the product rule. So then people rewrite this as log base three of three and log base three of X and then minus log base three of Y. So there's totally nothing wrong with this, this approach, but there is actually a, a faster way to do this once you get comfortable with logs. So I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in a second. Um, but there's also another property that you can use here. So this guy, so whenever you see that the, the base and this, these are the same numbers that will always equal one, right? So that was actually this property back here that we talked about. So 
this guy equals 1. So I can rewrite this little answer as 1 plus log base 3 of x minus log base 3 of y. Bada bing, bada boom, we're good. Okay, so here's the thing I want to point out, though. Um, and, and I'll get you to trust this, hopefully in the next example. But kind of a thing that you're going to notice is, so you can break anything that's in the numerator of a fraction. That will always be broken up by addition. Anything that falls in the denominator will always get a subtraction sign. That's actually like a pattern that you'll start to notice with logarithms that you can kind of rely on. But I want to prove that to you again in another example. Okay, so why don't you pause the video here, give this one a try, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So for this one, so if I try to break this up again, so I'll, I'll show you kind of the longer way to do this. So first I can break up the top and the bottom like this. So I've got log base 5 of 25x to the 7th minus log base 5 of y to the 3rd z squared. Okay, so I can break these up farther. Both of these I can break up using the product rule. So this is gonna be log base five of 25. This is gonna be log base five of x to the seventh. And then this is gonna be minus, let's see, I actually think I need to give myself a little room. Let me clear some space. Okay, I just wanted to adjust everything so I have a little more room. Um, okay, so this is gonna be minus so this will be in parentheses, right? Because I need to now distribute this minus sign to everything I do here. So this will be minus log base five of y to the third plus log base five of z squared. Oops, and is that square bracket? Okay, so here's kind of what I'm talking about. So if you, if you ignore the rest of this problem, so everything from the minus sign back, you would totally just use the product rule here, so that's how I broke this out. But then you have to distribute this minus sign here. So look at what actually happens when I distribute that. The way that this works out, this becomes log base 5 of 25, and then log base 5 of x to the 7th, minus log base 5 of y to the 3rd, minus log base 5 of z squared. So notice kind of the pattern here. The stuff that's in the denominator just gets the minus sign. See, that's like something you can kind of rely on when you are doing these types of problems. It's kind of a shortcut. And then we've got a few other things that we can do with this. So this 25, I can actually rewrite as 5 squared. So I'm going to do that. So this is going to be log base 5 of 5 squared. I can bring out the, bring down the exponents now as shown like this log base 5 of z. And now, so I, I'm, I'm just going to write this out right in this step here. So notice, so this is log base 5 of 5 squared. So I can actually bring this 2 down. So let me just rewrite this whole thing then. I, I want to just give myself some room. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times log base 5 of 5. And now, so now I can finally kind of get to this. So now I've got log base 5 of 5. This, we know, equals 1. So the final answer is 2 plus 7 log base 5 of x minus 3 log base 5 of y minus 2 log base 5 of 7. So you'll get faster with some of these as you start playing around with these more. But that's kind of like the, the general idea. Okay, so now I want to go the other direction with this. And once again, I'm just going to show you a couple of examples. And if you want to see more examples, I have a whole video on just examples of this as well. So I want to write the logarithms as single logarithms. So just one logarithm now. So now I'm going, I'm using the properties backwards, basically. So this one, notice I'm subtracting here. So that means I have to use division. So this will be log base 2 of 3 over 7. So notice it's a singular log, right? It's not log base 2 of 3 over log base 2 of z. It's just one singular log. Okay, so for the next one, so this is the power rule. So I can rewrite this as log base 5 of 2 to the 3rd. So this will be log base 5 of 8 if I evaluate what 2 to the 3rd is. 
And then this last one, so now I've actually got this five here. So this will be log of x to the fifth, and then I'm adding them together. So this will ultimately be rewritten as, maybe I'll just do it in steps. So log of x to the fifth plus log of y, and then I can multiply those results together. So this will be log of x to the fifth times y. So that would be the solution, or that would be the answer there. So those are using the basics. And so now what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video here and you try this and you can kind of apply some of that logic that we talked about earlier with this. Hit play when you're ready. So if I want to take this in steps, so I can technically write these exponents first. So I can go ahead and write this out as shown. But the thing to remember is, like I said, if you've got a minus sign, that means that these are going to be the things that go in the denominator. So I would just kind of rely on that then. So this becomes log base 3 of x to the 1 half over y to the 5th and z. So you can just go ahead and compress it as shown. And some books um, want you to write this as the square root of x. So x to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of x. So 6 one way, half a dozen the other. So it just kind of depends on what you're working on um, when, when you're using that property. So I have one more example using natural logs. So you can go ahead and pause the video, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So if I want to rewrite this now with all of the exponents, so first I can do that. And let's see, minus the natural log of w. So remember, anything that has a plus sign goes on top. So this will be the natural log of x cubed y squared. Anything that has a minus sign goes on bottom. This will be x to the fourth w. Now sometimes what happens with these is you can actually simplify them. Technically, you could have done this um, earlier. So you could have just taken 3 natural log of x minus 4 natural log of x, which if you did that, good for you. But if you didn't notice that, so you can simplify here. So this would equal then the natural log of y squared over xw because the you can basically subtract the exponents and you have more x's in the bottom than on top. You have four x's in the bottom, three on top, so you'll end up with x in the bottom. So there's kind of the idea behind this. And again, I have a whole other video of just more examples of this if that was not enough for you. So if you'd like to see some more, um, feel free to check that out. But otherwise, that's kind of the, the basic idea of log properties. So that's kind of a good intro to this. So hopefully I'll see you guys in another video. And if not, if you're in my intermediate algebra class, this is actually our last video. So you have made it to the very end. So woohoo. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.